It's the advent of cyber 2023, and we are on a mission to save Christmas. McReady, you are going down. I have the THM army with me. Let's go. Yeah. Uh. I'm a Papa Shell, but not what you think. Who am my root? Make your dead a leg sink. We are on a mission, we're here to save Christmas McGreedy's going down, forget about the riches Rumors gun around, like Skitty's got snitches It's an insider threat, and everyone's suspicious Recon McRed is hunting down a witness He says he needs our help, so power on your system Get your black hoodie, boot up the attack box Hackers come together and take command of the sock It's the THM army, McGreedy will get caught From the 0x1 all the way up to the guy and it is time what is up everyone welcome back to my live stream my name is tyler ramsby we are on a mission to save christmas and look today's stream is going to be a little bit different we are going to begin with avenue of cyber by try hack me but once we are done with day 18 of avenue of cyber by try hack me we are going to switch gears and dive into hack the boxes challenge they have a similar challenge i believe theirs is only five days and it started yesterday called operation Tinsel, maybe your Operation Tinsel traits or something along those lines, and have not looked at it at all. So I want to dive into it blind. I know it's all incident response, blue team like log analysis, which to be honest, I have very little experience doing. And when I say very little experience, I mean I like really haven't done it outside of CTFs and labs. I'm a pen tester and I do strictly pen testing. We don't do like blue team or purple teaming. I am just a pen tester so excited to dive into that and just see hey can we figure it out can we stumble through it together but first avid of cyber then hack the box and if you're watching this recording after the fact and you're watching the avid of cyber video just know that just check out the next video after this and it should be the hack the box video maybe um if i completely like bomb it and can't figure anything out then it's probably not going to be that <laughs> it probably won't show up on youtube but we'll still do it on the live stream and see what we are able to do so Without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen. There we go. And we will dive into day 18. And like usual, I haven't looked at this ahead of time. We are diving into it blind. I do have the, no, I don't have the machine open. Let me do that real quick. I have it right here, but I wanna make it full screen and I have a weird trick to doing that. Now we should be able to flip back and forth. There we go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> McGreedy is very greedy and doesn't let go of any chance to earn some extra elf bucks. I even talk about that in the rap song. During the investigation of an insider threat, the blue team found a production server that was using unexpectedly high resources. It might be a crypto miner. So he's a crypto bro. He's probably posting on discords too, telling you how we can earn however much money in however many days just by investigating your crypto and him. They narrowed it down to a single unapproved suspicious process. It has to be eliminated to ensure that company resources are not misused for this. They must find all the nooks and crannies where the process might have embedded itself and remove it. So what are our learning objectives? Number one, identify the CPU and memory usage of processes in Linux. Two, kill unwanted processes in Linux, which is kill dash nine. Find ways a process can persist beyond termination. I'm guessing cron jobs is going to be one of them. And four, remove persistent processes permanently. All right, so identifying the process. Linux gives us various options for monitoring assistance performance. Using these, we can identify the resource usage of processes processes. One option is the top command. This command shows us a list of processes in real time with their usage. It's a dynamic list, meaning it changes with the resource usage of each process. So we can do that in our VM. I'll get the terminal pulled up. Make it full screen. And there we go. Running top, we can see a few things on here. This, you know, A. Python 3 is running. Tiger VNC, that's actually what we're connected to. Mate terminal, select reader. Cool, cool. 
In the terminal, the output changes dynamically with the resource usage of different processes, similar to what we see in the task manager in Windows. It also shows important information such as the process ID, the user, the CPU usage, the memory usage, and the commander process name. In the above terminal output, we can see that the topmost entry in the output is a process that uses 100% CPU. They must be running Google Chrome. We will return to it later, but for now, we can see that our shell is not interactive and only shows this command's results. To exit from this view, press the Q key. Killing the culprit. At the top of the output of the top command, we find our culprit. It's the process named Google Chrome, I mean A, which uses unusually high CPU resources. In normal circumstances, we shouldn't have processes consistently using very high amounts of CPU resources. However, certain processes might do this for a short amount of time for intense processing. The process we see here consistently uses 100% of the CPU resources, which can signify a hardworking, malicious process like a crypto miner. We see that the root user runs this process. The process's name and resource usage gives a suspicious vibe, looks pretty sus, as the kids would say, and assuming this is the process unnecessarily hogging our resources, we would like to, boom, kill it. And actual production servers don't just try to kill them unless you're sure you're doing. Thanks for that disclaimer there, room creator. If we wanted to perform forensics, we would take a memory dump of the process to analyze it further before killing it, as killing it would cause us to lose that information. However, taking a memory dump is out of scope here. We'll assume that we've already done that and move on to termination. We can use the kill command to kill this process. However, since the process is running this route, it's a good idea to use sudo to elevate privileges for killing this process. Let's try to kill it. Note that you got to replace that with the PID that is shown in your top output. So, it's 650. Ooh, and it's still there because it probably has some persistence built in there. Oh, that's obviously not going to do anything. There's lots of A's, you know, if you just grew up for A. Anyways, I bet it's because it's a cron job, possibly. We don't get any error, so we believe the process has been killed. Let's check in with the top command, which is still there. Whoa, it's still there, bro. Did our command not work? Oh, wait, the PID has changed, and so is the time. Hmm, it looks like we successfully killed the process, but it has been resurrected. It's a zombie. Let's see what happened. Checking the cron jobs, exactly what my guess was. Our first hint of what happened with the process will be in cron jobs. Same thing you check when you're doing priv ask on a Linux machine. Cron jobs are tasks that we ask the computer to perform on our behalf at a fixed interval. Often that's where we can find traces of auto starting processes. To, tech, to check the cron jobs, we can use the command crontab l, so list. A nice description is shown, blah, blah. Okay, so we can see on a reboot, that's what this at reboot means. So when the machine reboots, we are running our VNC server. That is mainly just so we can connect to it over the internet. And also on a reboot, we have this web Sockify, localhost 5901, I believe. Um, that all has to do with the actual machine. So we don't see our target process yet, I don't think. Well, yeah, we'd have no luck, but wait. The process is running as root, and each user has their own cron jobs, which is true. So why don't we check the cron jobs as the root user? Let's switch over to root and see if we find something there. Nothing. Sneaky McGreedy. Maybe we should check for running services that might bring the process back, but the process name is quite generic and doesn't give a good hint. We might be clutching at straws here, but let's see what services are running on the system. We'll do system CTL list unit files. Oh, we want to grep enabled. Good word. turn off desktop audio as well and let me move this over here what was that px command um sorry default sec i'm just seeing your message my friend so i'm not quite sure when you asked that this one the psaux that just shows running processes as well anyways if we look at this 
I see Crypt set up. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. We have a whoopsie service. A, unkillable service, right there. You guys see it? A dash unkillable service. I bet that's going to be our target here. We do find something suspicious here. It looks like it's a strange name for a normal service. Let's get more information about this service, starting with checking its status. So. Doing. So we have it loaded, it's active, it's running. And it's, it is starting that A service. It's an unkillable proc. Well, we'll see about that. Starting unkillable executable as the root user. It's starting that service. And it's Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Oh, we found the devil in the details. We can see that the service is running the process named A that we couldn't kill. What's more, the service is taunting us with a greedy message. We must kill it if we're to kill this useless process. One second. I want to see what my flags are. I think we probably have a flag. Yeah. It is the unkillable service. What is the path from where the process and services were running? Oh. Oh, Etsy system D. I got you. All right, let's go back. Oh, wait, maybe we can answer this question. The malware prints a taunting message. When is the message shown? Choose from the options below. I think when it runs. Well, let's just let's finish the task. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, oh, so now that we have identified the service, let's embark on a journey to get rid of it. The first step will be to stop the service. We might need root privileges for that, so we'll have to switch the root user. Let's check the status again, which I'm already the root user, so we good. Yeah, not so unkillable now, is it? Oh, am I supposed to kill it? Oh, I'm supposed to stop it. Gotcha. inactive so we technically killed it let's not stop here let's check up on our processes it's not there yay no more unkillable process now let's quickly wrap this up by killing the service as well we can continue by disabling the service whoops sorry sorry get out All right, so we can see that the status is still loaded, but it's disabled. The problem is that the service is still present in the system. To completely eradicate the service, we have to remove the files from the file system as well. Let's do that. Here we can see the location is etsy systemd system, and location of the process is etsy systemd system A. To permanently kill the process, let's delete those two files. I wish I could spell. Okay, started on kill by the exe. So there's our command. So we need to remove that. And there is where our service or are those the two things we need to kill? Is that what it's telling me? Yeah. So we'll remove both of those. Hey, what up, J Money? Good to have you here, my friend. 
Finally, we are now rid of that stubborn service that claimed to be unkillable. To wrap it up, we might run the following command to ensure no remnants are left. This will reload all the service configurations and create the whole service dependency tree again, meaning that if there are any remnants left, it will eliminate them. Come on. Yep, and that's good. And if we status that beast, it's not found. We removed it. Um, okay, the malware prints a taunting message. When is the message shown? I don't know. I didn't ever see the message. Okay, it was none of the above. Yeah, just when you're looking at the status. Okay, well, that will do it for whatever day we're on. We made it through 18 days of Avon of Cyber thus far. I am at, what, a 28-day challenge, so that's exciting stuff. But now that we are done, we're going to dive into Hack the Box. But it's going to be a little bit weird for those of you watching the live recording because I'm going to stop recording and then we'll start again just for YouTube. So for those of you watching this after the fact on YouTube, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed day 18, and I will catch you all in the next one.